Be seated. Counsel and the defendant are present. The jury is absent. Uh, I'm going to accede to the jury's, first on the Monday issue, I'm going to accede to the jury's request um, I, or um, feelings about Monday. I think it's a very reasonable position. I think they're looking at it and thinking there's a reasonable likelihood we're not going to finish next week. Prob possibility, and that being the case, they'd rather just take Monday off, have a four-day week, and come back on uh, the following Tuesday. And given the fact that the trial is going to exceed what I represented, the uh, amount of time it would take to be, and given the fact that I also represented to them that we wouldn't have court on Mondays when we were selecting them, uh, we won't have court on Monday, and we'll start back up on Tuesday. Um, now, uh, I, I'm going to sustain the objection to the playing of this additional part of the clip to Mrs. Kelly's testimony. Mrs. Kelly, this witness, testified, as I said, in at least five and a half hours on a direct examination, which, which was largely consumed with um, questions directed her to impeach her testimony. Uh, frankly, it was the more it went on, um, the less it was clear to the court what the substantive testimony was that was trying to be impeached and what was impeachment. It was five and a half hours of impeachment. The other couple of lines of uh, testimony that's being proffered in this transcript and this recording is cumulative and redundant and of marginal probative value. The court's going to sustain the objection. All right, let's bring the jury in, and we'll put the witness back on the stand. <clears throat> Please be seated. The record will show the presence of all the jurors, counsel, and the defendant. Um, considering the, I've talked to the, the lawyers about the Monday situation. I think, uh, listen carefully to what you said. I think it's a, you have a very reasonable position. I'm going to respect it. We're not going to have court on Monday. Number one, it looks like the trial might go longer than I had represented to you that it would go. Not real happy about having done that and being in that position. Uh, and I also represented to you, court would be Tuesday through Friday. So to add another condition coming in on Monday after I've already, um, blown through the first deadline likely, then uh, I'm going to respect that. Also, I think you've sized the situation up pretty well. As I told you this morning, everything's unpredictable. We don't know exactly how long things are going to take, but I think there's a reasonable likelihood that we could go into the following week, which is the way you kind of looked at it and sized it up, and it makes sense. So uh, we will not have court on Monday. We're going to finish today about 3 o'clock, depending upon where, when we are or where we are with this witness, and then we'll adjourn until Tuesday of next week at 8.30. Okay? Good. Well, thank you for your input. I think that was, that was helpful to us. I'm glad I asked you. Okay, uh, we have the witness back on the stand, still under oath. You can go ahead, Mr. Jetty. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to clear up a couple of things, Detective Ianza, because I think I made a mistake before the break. I'm going to talk about two exhibits, Government Exhibit 102 and 135.1.
I'm sure just for the record, 102 has been admitted and 135.1. Yes, sir. Go ahead and open those both up, Detective. Doesn't matter which one. Start with the box. We can start with Government Exhibit 102. You recognize, you recognize that, right? You can take it out. It's been admitted. Is that the magazine with live rounds in it? Yes, it is. Where was that magazine found? This was inside um, the AK. It was actually locked and loaded. So Government Exhibit 102 is the magazine that goes with Government Exhibit 101. That's correct. 101, 102 go together. That's correct. The shell casing, you can put that in the box. The show casings found, and I can bring out the exhibit, but 101, the gun box. Remember the gun box? Yes. And there's a small envelope, one o, government exhibit 101.1. Yes. Do you recall that? Yes. Where are those show casings inside that box? These right here? No, no, no. The 101, the big box with the gun, and there's a small envelope inside there. All those are spent casings. From who? From this, uh, this item. That's what you're asking? I'm asking spend cases. Did, is this from Rick Wyant's? Yes, that's from Rick Wyant's, the right. expert. So the spent shell casings in the box with the rifle are expert spent shell casings that they use to test the weapon. That's correct. 102 is ammo that was actually with the weapon when recovered on the search warrant. That's correct. And go ahead, 135.1. Should just be a single empty magazine. That's right. That was testimony from DPS forensic scientist Brudenell that he took ammunition from that magazine and test fired it? That's correct. All right. And then finally, government exhibit 103 to 110 are the spent shell casings found on scene. That's correct. I just want to make sure we get all these spent shell casings and ammunition. And all these things are found from the search warrants. That's correct. And all of them are the same type of ammunition. That's correct. And I'm going to retrieve those. And there may have been some confusion. Sorry, I got something stuck in my throat. About the fanny pack. When I asked you about any damage, I was referring to, is there any gunshot damage to the fanny pack? No, there's no gunshot to the fanny pack. No gunshot damage? No gunshot damage. And when you did the search warrant 008, this is the second search warrant, and you went to the barn to search the barn? That's correct. What else did you search out there? Myself and now Sergeant Bunting, we actually walked south-southwest of the property approximately, I'm going to say a quarter of a mile to almost a half a mile just south, just walking, searching. And did you find anything? No, sir. And one of the things I was asking about, did you find, remember I was going through a list of things you didn't find? One yes, sir. I, I, didn't, I didn't ask you, did you find any backpacks? We didn't find any backpacks. And when you were on scene and did search for, are there any pine trees in the area? Yes, there is. And just so we, I want to make sure we're, we're crystal clear, the picture from KK, Defense Exhibit KK, the one with the sun in it, I can show it to you. No, I remember. Is that one, is that a photograph that you took? That's not my photograph. I do not recognize that photograph. And you took all the photographs from the search warrants. That's correct. 
And Sergeant Flores took photographs of what? He took photographs, I believe, I wasn't there, but I believe he's during the cutting of the branch. And he also take photographs of the victim? That's correct. All right, he branch and victim, and you had all the other photographs? That's correct. And what happened to co-counsel? We're gonna get teed up here. Give me a, a few moments, Your Honor, for the interview. I don't know about them. She's coming back in, Your Honor. Just one second. Are you ready? We're gonna play the uh, state exit. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, those are from the. Oh, no, we're talking about the transcripts of the. Defense interview. All right, we're ready to play. All right, and this is exhibit. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. We have a transcript. Oh, I'm sorry. We have a transcript, but apparently it's not here. 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 All right, this is an interview of Mr. Kelly. That's correct. Exhibit 57. All right, very well. Um, how's the uh, audio on this? It's a video and audio. It should be. It should be decent. Decent audio. I say that now, but I, I have some recollection that, but I could be wrong. All right, we'll see it. We'll try it. Uh, again, I have my own speaker up here, so what you're hearing, what I hear is different volumes. So if you have a problem hearing this, um, raise your hand, let me know so we can make some adjustments. All right? Uh, any objection from this defense? Over there? Knock, knock. Anybody there? That's right. Any, any objection? Playing this? Yeah. No, sir. Okay, good. Just check it. Uh, go ahead. Are you a Tar Heel man? Are you a Tar Heel man? I need you. All right, how would you like Tar? Okay. Stephen D. Nice. Okay. Matthew. What is your high level education? Graduate school. Graduate school. What's your degree in? Pre med and undergraduate, pre med and graduate. Okay. Where'd you go to school at? Wake Forest University, University of North Carolina, MC State, Appalachian State. Okay. How long have you been retired?
Um, but I've, I've owned that ranch since 2002. Okay. I've built my barn in 2003. And the round you said, you retired, you take care of a ranch? I'm not retired. I'm not retired. I, I draw Social Security, but the ranch is never retired. Okay, but I was saying, that's your, that's your, your same income right now. Aside from your Social Security, you, you maintain your ranch? Yes. And it's your ranch? It's my ranch only 100%. Mine and my wife. And cattle? Yes. Okay. That's what you do then. Cattle and horses. Okay. Um, so, George, you know why you're here? Yeah, because that guy brought me in that Chevy. I don't like riding Chevy. But do you know why they brought you down here? I assume that that yeah, I know why they brought me down here because I found a body on my my ranch. Well, what were you gonna do? So it's right now, sir, I'm going to read your rights. Yeah, I know you're going to just come okay. to the right. So it's 8.35, so it's 20.35, okay? All right. You have the right to make assignments. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to talk to the Lord to have him present with you while being questioned you guilty life. If you cannot afford to hire a one will be appointed to you to represent you before any question if you wish one. You may cease talking at any time. Do you understand each of these rights I've read to you? Yes, sir. Now, having understood these rights and knowing your rights, do you wish to talk to us? It's a yes or a no. Can I ask something? Jose Lerma was my attorney. Okay. And he's retired now and lives in Tucson. Okay. So I don't have an attorney. Okay, so let me ask you this. Do you understand each right I read to you? Yes. Yeah. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to have a lawyer present. If you were me, would you have a lawyer present? I can't give you any legal information, sir. But so my question to you is, now knowing you understand your rights, do you understand your rights? Yes, I understand Every right. single right I read to you, do you understand yes, your rights? Yes, I understand. Now, <coughs> understanding your rights, being read your rights, and you understand your rights, do you wish to talk to us? If I talk to you, can I refuse to answer a question? Yes, yes or no, sir. Simple as that. Do you? Well, I want to walk right you wish to talk to us, yeah. Okay. Not that be stupid, but I'm, I'm saying, because I want this thing solved. Okay. All right. All right, Vince. Tell me everything you did today from the time you woke up to the time you came here and me talking to you. Yeah, I woke up. I ate breakfast. Um, I went out. Let my horse out into the main pasture, checked on my water, my cattle, checked on the dogs, fed the dogs, fed the horse, came back in and ate lunch. Um, when I was eating lunch, and this is a hard matter, and I'm being open. And I want, I want to make sure you understand I'm making uh, I was eating lunch, and while I was eating lunch, we only been in my house, but I have a little island there. And you can see out the window. You can see out the window. Uh, I heard shots, close. 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 And I saw my horse running across the pasture in front of me about 100, 150 yards. And I saw men in full, it was kind of odd. This has happened, this has happened three other times. Uh, this was investigated by your department back in the, in the spring. If you live out there on the border, you see they, you see people coming out through there all the time. Um, so I saw guys running across in full. Normally they have full green, green top and bottom with backpacks on. This is unusual because these guys had tan shirts and pants with full brown, big, solid backpacks. Okay. I saw them and I heard the shot when I came out there. And I went out there and I saw them running down and into this 
see it as an anxious pig and doing a royal. I immediately took my cell phone out. I called Jeremy Marcel, who was a ranch liaison for Border Patrol. I told him what I saw. And he said, we'll send somebody out there as quick as we can. And he said, did you hear a shot fired? And I said, yes, I heard one shot fired. And they said, okay, we're going to send the Sheriff's Department because the shot was fired. And we're going to send the Border Patrol because you saw people that you assumed were drug carriers. Because I see them out there all the time. And, and then, so I said, just, they'll be out there if you get out, be outside where they can see you, or wherever. And so they came, Border Patrol came first, then y'all guys had two or three units come out, I think were five officers, uh, a man and a, two men and two ladies, and then there was another one, three, I think three people. There are separate clips for this. Three sheriffs. I don't know if I need to see who they're sheriffs. Are all of them going to come out there to be sheriffs? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then they, I just stood there while they completely surrounded that area, walked all through it. It's 170 acres. Rain. They stayed out there and walked through it, right where I saw the guys running in the wash and all that stuff. They walked and examined it, and Officer Lopez, Jorge, uh, uh, no, Rafael, Rafael Lopez, he was one of the officers. He didn't walk where, there's other officers that, that walked where the body was. And they didn't see anything. And there was three or four of them that walked there. I didn't walk there. I didn't. I wasn't. I didn't go there at all. But they walked there, and they didn't see anything. And then we we walked all over the ranch, and they walked down the border patrol, and and sheriff's people were you know working together, working the whole walking all over the whole ranch. They didn't see anybody. I didn't see anybody. The only people I saw were the ones running across. And ran down with my horse. Okay, now, all that was done over a two or three hour period of time when the officers were out there and the was over. They said, okay, we've looked. They're not here. They're, they're gone. I was 30 minutes after I called them for anybody to get there. I don't understand that. You can't tell the word. So they had plenty of time to run down the wash, cross the fence where they cut all the fences this week. Last week, and I reported it's cut in 10 places of water. It's still cut. And I assume they ran down the wash, went through the same place the fences were cut, and then went over into Bunyas. That's my guess. I'm just saying that again. Okay, so they said, but the place is clean. There's nothing, nobody's out here. No illegals, no drug runners, nobody's out here. As far as they can. Uh, and I said, okay. So I went back in, and my wife and I were, were, were getting ready to eat supper. And so it was about 5 o'clock. Uh, I went out to put my horse out. Uh, I wanted to check him over real good, too. Uh, because I didn't know if that one shot was fired, whether they might have shot my horse. I checked him over real good, put him up. Uh, oh, I better back up. When I went out to get him, he was out in the, in, the, in, the, in the pasture. When I went out to get the horse, then I walked around down the, down the, the little road where the horse comes. He follows me down. When I'm following the horse in to put the horse up, then I'm, I'm in the road and my dogs are with me. Got two Labrador shut up in my garage right now. Two dogs, and they, here's, here's the trail, I'm walking down the trail, 10 yards off the trail, the dogs ran over there and began investigating. And I, I trained my dogs, I trained a thousand rats. I knew that they had, they had seen something, spotted something, smelled something. I walked over there, I saw the dog. 
It was lying face down. I didn't do anything to it, but I knew, I said, mm -mm, this is bad. I just, I could tell the individual, I had medical training, I could tell the individual wasn't breathing. Um, and by the look, it was laying face down, flat, face down, and his face was in the dirt. And I wanted to make sure that he wasn't, wasn't alive. Because I would immediately call an ambulance. But I've watched. I maybe stood there for three minutes to make sure he wasn't breathing. Uh, I didn't see any blood. I didn't see anything. I just saw the body. I immediately I backed up the way I came to him. Because I knew, I said, okay, I've got a body here. This is dirt. This is going to be an investigation. It's going, they're going to need not the evidence not be contaminated. So I backed up, walked right back to the house the way I came, immediately called Jerry Morissette, myself, the Border Patrol liaison, and I told him I need Border Patrol and the Sheriff's Department out here. I didn't tell him why. Uh, I just said that there's a body out here. I didn't say human or anything. I said there's a body out here. And that immediately he called you guys and the Border Patrol and the Border Patrol. But he called the Border Patrol his main office. They called the Sheriff's Department. Because that's the way he said it was. Uh, then the, the lady called me, the Sheriff's Department called me back and said, We're sending officers out there. Did you be out there meeting? They were out there while I was talking to her on the phone. And from that was Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Lucas. Sergeant. No, Officer Lopez, mm -hmm. uh, Rafael Lopez. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, "Will you take me out?" And I'm trying to make sure I did it right. There was another officer there mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a shirt like that, without a. It was a tan shirt, I think, or, and he he went with us. We waited for him, because that's right. Lopez wanted us to wait for him, because he got there, he did. He came up quickly before dark. And we, he said, okay, I want you to take us to what you saw. So we walked out the road, the three of us, and I had marked where the body was by a flashlight. One of my little flashlights, just, I turned it on and put it on the tree limb, the steep limb, and turned it on. So I know exactly where it was in case I thought. We walked to the flashlight. I said, okay, here's the flashlight. I put the flashlight down. I said, you guys walk in this direction, 10 feet, and you're going to see the body. They walked it, and Sergeant, I mean, Officer Lopez walked up and looked at the other officer. I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. And nodded. And they said, okay, let's back off because we don't want to contaminate any evidence. Let's back off and go back to the house. But the one officer, was the sergeant, or I don't know, he stayed with the body. And me and uh, Officer Lopez went back to the house, not, not in the house, we went back to his vehicle. And he said, I won't call other officers. And so there were, I don't know, four or five cars in. He said, where is your wife? Can they go up to talk to her? And then I said, of course. They went up, they rang the doorbell, and they talked to her. And then she, she's been brought here too, I think. I don't know. Uh, but I never saw her after that, period. So I'm sure I've left out some things, but that's basically as much as I remember. I, I will say this, that I've never been confronted with a situation like this where I'm still somewhat agitated. I'm still somewhat nervous, upset. You don't find a body on your hands. I understand. Let me ask you something, uh, George. Did you ever call the sheriff's office directly? No, the border patrol. Did you ever advise border patrol that 
that you saw so many inside your house? There was nobody, nobody was inside my house. So when you initially called Border Patrol, you never made a statement where you told Oh yeah, I, I, got, I got I got people inside my house. No, no, I never felt that because there's nobody inside my house. I said, I'm inside my house and there's people running outside my house. That was the initial call of Border Patrol. Because I could see the backpack, I assumed they were probably drug runners and I always saw Border Patrol. What time was this around when you initially saw the, the people? It was I was eating lunch. It could be more. This is one thirty-two o'clock. And and you mentioned that you heard the shot. Do you own any weapons? Yes. Yes. How many weapons do you own? And what type of weapons do you own? Well, I just said he's going to come get all our guns, so I don't know that I want to answer that. That's okay. And and, and that's in your right. I had uh, Officer Lopez has my. 40 caliber block, and I had it on my side, and he, I, he said, will you let me? <clears throat> he has that, and I'll put it in my car and get it back to you when this is all done. So I have a, he has my 40 caliber block. But is it safe to say that you have more weapons in the house? I, 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 I'm not going to answer. Let me ask, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to do a search warrant right now. That's fine. I'm drafting up the search warrant right That's now. fine. Okay. Um, whether you tell me or not, we, I'm going to find out. Let me tell you this. Um, do you know we conduct ballistics, correct? Yes. So, then we'll, we'll go into that right now, okay? So, at one point, did you ever run after these people? Run after them? No. Okay. Did you ever... Uh, and any time you saw these people running, were you realize, did you feel that your life was in danger? Yes. Okay. Because I heard a shot fire. Okay. And now knowing your life was in danger because you heard the shots, I'm asking you, did you ever run after these people? No, I did not run after them. At the time you were eating lunch, were you armed? I had my 40 caliber on my side. Are you always armed? Yes. Okay. And yeah, what? I'm not always. I don't I mean, there's your yeah. normal day. There's your normal day. Yeah, okay. I was at 40 calories. So at one point, you never uh, went after these people? No, no. You never, you never um, tried to see who they were? No. Now, while, when I called Border Patrol and they were coming out, I, I, took, I walked down the road and across the wash and up to the other side because I simply wanted to see if somebody was over there shoot my cows. So I didn't walk. I didn't walk after them. I just walked down the road and walked to my car. Was there around the same time when the deputies initially responded as well? I'm not sure. I just kind of understand this. When, when you said that you walked the wash and you went up to check that nobody was checking your car or um, yeah. killing your cops, I'm sorry. Was that around the same time when the deputies responded when you mentioned that they were? But yes, I met them on the road. Okay. Border patrol came there first. So we have deputy saying that you were armed with a rifle. Is that saying? Yes. That? So that's true. Yes. Okay. Did you ever go back to the house to get your rifle? Did I ever go back to the house? I have to go back when? Mm -hmm. To the house because right now I asked you if you were armed. You said you only were armed with your yes. rifle. Yes. Yeah. Now you're saying that you had a rifle. I was armed when I saw the individual. Before I started walking down the road, to walk down the road, I got my AK-47. So I have my AK-47. I got it and I put it on my shoulder with my pistol, and I walked down the road with the pistol and the AK-47. It happened to be out there, but it's my main road to the back. I didn't look for them. I didn't chase them. I just walked down and went over to the barn to make sure that everything was secure. And we say you felt you, you felt your life was in danger because of the shot or because you saw the men? Because the shot. Okay. And I saw the men after the shot. You put the two together. Okay. And you know what it's like to be out there. I mean, I've been shot three times in the last 20 years. Have they reported those past incidents? Yes. In fact, they, they and the, the sheriff actually arrested one of the guys. They what? It was, it was not a drug. I was closing the gate one time and three shots came by. 
when I want to clip my ear. So it was just how long ago? Years ago. And I called the sheriff immediately. Okay. And they came out and they came down Kilo Springs Drive and the guy was trying to run away and they caught him and took the gun. Um so you go out there and find the body. What time did you find the body? It was before dark, so I, I would say And what did you do once you saw the body? As soon as I saw the body, I backed off, went to the house, and called the border patrol. Is there any reason you called the border patrol and not us first? Because I, the border patrol were the initial investigators of the incident that took place earlier that day. And Jerry Marcel is the ranch liaison. And he said, anytime you see any people out there that you are suspicious of, call us, and we'll come out and investigate. And so he'd already been out there, and we have a personal relationship. I mean, he's a ranch liaison, I've known him for years. Mm -hmm. And so I called him, and that's funny, and he, and he said, I will call the sheriff's department. I said, please, call the sheriff's department. So, I don't know, I don't know if I answered your question like you, like you asked it, I'm not sure. Ask if you asked it, you know, Something's not adding up. I mean, I mean not adding up. Something's not, something's not adding up. It's just how this all came about, how it was reported the first and how the second time was reported. You say you made some statements to some deputies. I don't see that it's very concerning to me right now. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the opportunity to be straight up with me, be honest. Okay. This is your time to try to help yourself. If you shot this person by mistake or by fear, you gotta let me know because I'm gonna do a search on your house. I understand. I'm gonna do ballistics, and if I recover the casing or the bullet on the body, and it's just right there with him, you're gonna be in trouble. I understand. So I'm giving you the opportunity right now. Be real honest. <coughs> and if you shot this person, you gotta let me know. You gotta be honest with me, George. Because nothing's adding up right now. Okay. The statements you made on scene and what you're telling me right now, I don't know what didn't add up. It's not adding up. Tell me what didn't add up. It's in the stories, your demeanor, and your behavior. Okay? So I'm going to let you, I'm going to ask you one more time. Okay? And I'm going to ask you to be honest with me. I've been honest with you. Okay? So if you shot this person by fear and you hit him and he died, you gotta let me know. Because like I said, I'm gonna do a search on your house and I'm gonna recover every single weapon and I'm gonna get it tested. Whether whether you tell me, I, I have no reason to believe I shot this person. What does that mean? It means I have no reason to believe I shot him. That's it. Did you shoot? You made a statement, let me put it this way. You made a statement on one of your 9 calls to this agent, I shot something. Okay? To the board of relations? Yes, sir. So, so, your, so, I so, so your stories are not, not I right. didn't make that statement. Okay, well, it is, okay? And I'm gonna talk to the board of relations. Everything's recorded, you understand? I understand. Okay, so I'm asking you one more time. I did not make the statement that I shot I'm gonna ask you, you shot at something. That's exactly what was said. Okay, and it was said? I did not make that statement. George. I'm at, I'm telling you right now. Okay. I'm telling you. This is your opportunity. I understand. To come forward and tell me the truth. I'm telling you that I bet, did not make the statement that I shot somebody. Okay. Or shot it, shot at somebody, or shot period. Well, it's, it was said by you. Okay? So my question is here right now. How do you know it was said by me? Because the agent that called us said that you needed someone out there because you had shot somebody. That the agent said it. I didn't say it. Okay. I didn't make the statement that I shot at or shot somebody or the agent. The agent said no. He might have. He, I'm not going to say what the agent did. I didn't, I didn't hurt the agent. Okay. Did you shoot this gentleman? No. As far as I know. I mean, how, how can I know that? You're the one with the rifle. You're the one out who was found out there with a rifle. You're the one that found the body coincidentally hours after you spotted him. Okay? 
I did not shoot at anybody. Your wife is here. I understand. And I'm going to talk to her. Right now. Talk to her. Okay. So, so, you never shot this gentleman? No. That, that, no. I mean, Well, once we do the ballistics and everything, everything's going to come back, and we're going to find out. I understand that. And if that round came out out of your AK-47 right. or AR-15, guess what? I'm going to jail. Exactly. I understand. That, that's the way it is. And that's so, all. Okay. So now knowing that, now knowing that, help yourself and tell me the truth right now. I haven't told you a lot yet. Yeah. Where is that? Where? 
Where is that red flag? Uh, am I? I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll open the door. You don't have to answer it. You're not going back to the house. You're not going back to the house right now. Okay. The house is secure right now. Like I said, I'm not. My dogs are shedding the mud. We'll take care of your dogs. Don't worry about it. We'll, 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 we'll find out. We'll find out. But like I said, there's, um, there's some inconsistencies with your story. The stories you, some statements you may not I'm 74 years old. I'm saying I might be confused. Can you let me finish, please? I'll let you talk and you let me finish now. Okay. Okay. So, there is inconsistency inconsistent with your story right now. What I've been told by deputies on scene, what you said or and what you told Border Patrol. Okay? You just admit it right now that you shot. Yeah. At the running subject. I didn't want you. And I'm going to shut over your head. It doesn't matter. You shot towards them. Whether you shot over their head or not, you're shooting towards them. Okay? All right? Mm -hmm. You shoot straight up in the air. It doesn't matter. You shot towards or your reaction over their heads. Yeah. You sure you're going to educate a man? Go yeah. put the foot yeah. in the air. You shot at them. Not at them. I shot over their heads. Same difference. I don't, I don't agree. Okay? Well, your actions killed someone. I don't I don't know that. Well, we're, we're going to find out. Yeah. One second to the ballistics. I'm going to tell you right now. I've given you more than one time to tell me the truth. You're saying you shot over the heads. Yeah. That's what you're going to stick to. Yeah, that's the truth. Okay. Anything else? Do you have anything else for me, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Cook? Anything else for me? Anything, anything else? you want to add? Anything that is very important that's going to help you out or assist me in figuring this out? I don't know. I think you both are very professional. And, and, I, and I thank you. I haven't disrespected you. No, you, you know, don't. I just want to. I, I just want to get the bond because we have. I'm very upset and I'm confused. I know we, that. We have a people, and I have senility. Okay. We have a we have a deceased person. A what? We have a deceased person. Yes. Yes. I know. Okay. From a bullet strike. I don't know about that. Well, we're. Yes, I can tell her right now it is. So you examined him okay. and you found him. We have a sergeant that's on scene that he used to be a detective. Okay. He says, it looks like a puncture. Okay. From her. Then you put your story together, what you know, Border Patrol, put them two together. Whether your shot is accurate or not, whether that weapon is zero or not, something happened during that heat of the moment, adrenaline, you shot. You said you shot over, over their heads. I tell you, I'm glad you had the one shot I heard because it shot that individual too. There was one shot I heard before. Remember, it all started. I heard a shot. That's why I went outside. I saw the guy. I heard a shot. That shot could have shot that individual. But you know, but you know the cameras out there, right? Oh, I'm giving permission to put them all over my ranch. All right. All right. Um, was there anything else, sir? Not that, not that I can think of now that it's relevant or pertinent. Um, I, I apologize if I'm not clear or cognizant or not. No, you're clear. It's just what I've been told, what you said, and what's been relayed, it's just inconsistencies. It's not adding up. If I were you, maybe I would say it was inconsistent too. No. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I, I understand. I understand. This is what I do for a living. I understand. You're not. You're, you're, you're an individual that hasn't seen a body in the last four hours, laying on the ground. Well, I've seen. I know you. I've have. seen bodies left and right. Twenty-four hours from now, I may be a lot more calm. I've seen bodies freshly dead. I see some bones there. Okay, so it's just like I said, George. I'm not here to disrespect you. I haven't been disrespected. Well, you have. You know, I appreciate you coming out here, but it's just. Stories just don't match up, okay? And if I were in your shoes, maybe I would make the game so of the point of story is you shot someone's dead. Yeah. And proximity to your to your property. They're on the property, yeah. yeah. The bodies are on the property. So um I'm gonna take a quick break and I'll be right back. You stay right here, okay? Yeah, I would like to have some more. I'll get you some water. That's where I was going. Yeah. I'm going to bring you a, a bottle of water, okay? I'll be right back. Okay. I'm sitting right here. Yes, sir. Okay. okay.
Your Honor, would you like me to fast forward through the, um, through the time when nothing said? What's your position? How, what's, the, what's the gap here? I think Hold it's on. a few minutes. Nothing. We can end it. Uh, is there something else? I think so. And we'll watch it. So you just want to fast forward it to that point? Is that all right? Okay, go ahead. If I had thought that I had shot someone, I would have been stupid to call Border Patrol and I knew they were going to call the Sheriff's Department. That would be the dumbest thing that an educated man would do. I would have never called, period. I have no idea. I do not believe that I shot this person. I know I didn't shoot this person. If I thought there was any chance I shot this I would not have called him. Why would you say that? Because only an idiot would call the demon. Because it would be, it would be like, I don't know. I suppose, I suppose a man breaking in your house and and he's got a gun and he threatens your life. Okay, okay, stop. I already asked you if they were inside your house. You said no. no, I'm just, they may finish. Okay, okay. I already asked you if they were in the house, you said no. Okay. You already said your life was in danger because they had a, a rifle on them. Okay? I said my life was in danger. That's what I'm saying. Your life was in danger because the, the man had a rifle and you said that he tried to run that in front of you. Right. Okay? Um, you shot at them, but not at them, over them. I 
Shabbat Shalom and Lurie. Body is in, the body is, did you in your property? Yes. Okay, well, what is believed to be with a single gunshot wound, okay? A okay. small gunshot wound. You said you shot to an AK-47? Yes. Okay. And your inconsistent stories as what was said and what was told and what was relayed to us, okay? If you right. have to, okay. That's not what I said, so it's what it's it's what's it's been recorded. Okay, so George, I'm gonna ask you one more time. Is there anything else that you want to tell me right now to help yourself out? I don't see why I can tell you don't do it. Okay. So George, is it right now? You're gonna be under arrest. I understand. First degree murder. I understand. You understand? I understand. So we're gonna go ahead and process you. Okay. There's a gentleman that's gonna take you right now. Obviously, we're probably gonna have to take you to hospital so you can get some medi medication prescribed and you're gonna be booked in for first degree murder. I understand. Okay, is there anything else you wanna add? No. Okay, so as of right now, I'm gonna go ahead and inter interview and we'll go from here. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So this is the This is okay. Detective Aita along with Detective Barba. Um, this will end our interview with George Allen Kelly at 2119 hours. Well, if you don't know I will take care of it. Just hold on. Okay. Stay right here. I had your honor. So all the questions? All right. Uh, Cross-examination. Sorry, I was shocked. He told me he would have questions after. Sorry. <laughs> so glad to... Well, why will it, why well, I can talk after lunch. While we are on this video. Let's talk about that first. It wasn't my order, but I think it's fresh in our minds, okay? Yes, ma'am. You asked over and over, did you shoot at these gentlemen? And the response was, no, I didn't shoot at those gentlemen. But when you asked, did you shoot, he said yes and followed up with over the head, correct? That's correct, ma'am. Now, it seems to me like we're, combine, we're combining the events of what happened earlier to what happened that evening, okay? The five subjects that ran across his window would be heading in a southward direction, correct? That's correct. Because he said they were running parallel to him. That's correct. And you now understand he's in his home, in his kitchen. Is that correct? That's correct, ma'am. And we all went out there yesterday, and we're talking about the location of the body is due east, correct? That's correct. Give or take a few degrees, whatever, generally speaking. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Now, if... A person sees subjects running across the window, and the wife sees two of them running across the window. Because think about it this way. If he says, Wanda, quiet, look outside. Some of them could have already ran past the window. Was that possible? It could be possible. And then she looks up and sees two. Correct? That's what she's stating. That's what she did state over and over and adamantly in court, and you've been in here the whole time, correct? That's correct, ma'am. Okay. Now, there's dispute what she's saying, and we could talk about those disputes a little bit later. But for the sake of her adamant testimony, she saw two, three have could have already came out of the view of the window, correct? It's possible. Thank you. Now... You said there was no evidence. Exactly, ma'am. There's a witness, and she's sitting right behind me, and her name is Wanda Kelly. I know, ma'am. I recognize Okay. Her. 
witnesses are evidence, potential evidence, correct? That's correct. Okay. Because we brought someone in with, I don't know what we're calling them now, but started off as DRR, and he came in to testify, and that is your evidence, correct? That's correct. So is her testimony any less than his credibility and testimony? No, ma'am. Okay. And, of course, that'll be the juror's decision. We all understand that, right? That's correct. Okay. But we're looking at what you were looking at, and that's what I'm trying to convey to the jurors at this moment, okay? That's correct. Go all right. Now, that, that went one step further. It was reported and now we have more evidence of not something that got fabricated later on, but we have more evidence now that Mr. Kelly wanted to report his findings of what was going on, correct? That's correct. And from his information to the Border Patrol, Jeremy Marcel, he hadn't left his house yet when he reported it. Are you agreeing with that? It's the first time or the second time? We're at the beginning. He was at work. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kelly never had stepped out yet. He said he was going to, and he heard a shot, and then we got the horse, and that he might have to shoot, correct? That is correct. Okay. Now, we could all recall what Jeremy testified to. Yes, I was here. Okay. And so, if a person thinks... They ran parallel across their window. What's the first direction you're going to look at when you step out of your house? Towards the direction they're running. Right. I'm going to stand up and confirm that. I'm in my house. People are running across it and heading south. And I'm pointing to the right for the court report. I understand. I got you. my right. I get on the phone because Miss Wand over here brings the phone with the Border Patrol on there, and he reports what he reported, correct? That's correct. All right. He grabs his gun from the corner of the door there, which we heard testimony about that from Miss Wand, I believe. Correct? That's correct. And so when he steps out, is he going to look towards a body that's found later, or is he going to look at the subjects that are running in the south direction? It's logical he's going to look at the subjects. Thank you. Now, That's what he told me. We now have the potential self-defense, but instead of shooting that man, he shoots up in the air. And however many cases you have, eight, nine, what was it? It was a total of nine. Nine times. And he had the potential to even do more if he wanted to, correct? That's correct. Well, you know what size ammo he had on him, right? What does no. his magazine look like? Yes, ma'am. Okay. yesterday, correct? That's correct. He clearly said he didn't chase him. He you, said he didn't chase him. Right. So somehow we get that into the mix of everything else. That's correct. Okay. What part of raising his rifle to the subject that pointed a rifle at him is illegal? Ma'am, your meaning of of shooting at them or shooting them in their heads, it's different from my idea. Doing that, it's reckless, it's dangerous. Um, if you say shooting at them or over the heads, it's still a reckless display of a weapon, this, uh, this uh, reckless discharge of a firearm too. Okay, you're stating that when he has over 100 and something, almost 200 acres of land, that it would be reckless to even shoot his rifle on his own property? Pointing the gun up in the air and shooting it recklessly, man, it is. To what would he hit? 
You never know, man. So now you're thinking maybe this person could have been out way out there somewhere, got hit, and walked to the location? I'm not saying that. Okay, so what? which way is it? Because you all are presenting evidence that the bullet hole is facing the house. So is it that he died there, or did he die out there recklessly somewhere over the ridge, down in the creek, and received a bullet? He died where he was at. Okay, so you want to stay with that. How does that gun pointed at the people to the right affect the person that's due east? How does that happen? Can you repeat the question? How does a bullet that is being shot to, in the southern direction over the heads of these subjects end up in a bullet that is a person that's due east? How's that reckless? And how did it happen? The evidence shows, man, that Mr. Kelly came out of his porch and shot towards the direction. The body is dead directly behind his porch. That's your testimony, sir. What evidence do you have of that? It, it, the trajectory of the bullet, man, coming in and out of the body. It's coming from the direction of the Kelly house. You heard testimony. I finished the answer. Oh, I apologize. Okay, ma'am. That's where it's coming from. It goes from right to left, from bottom, and exits the chest. It is coming from the direction of the Cali house. Let me give you another possibility. If the judge is the location of the ravine that we stopped to look at yesterday, okay? Yes, ma'am. And the dead body is over here. Did you notice the elevation towards the ravine was way lower than the elevation where the body was? The wash, you mean, going the down? The wash, the arroyo, the wash, the ravine. It drops, it drops down. It drops down. Yes, ma'am. Now, if you recall, when we had that little stick that we put through the skeleton, you could see it was an upward direction. So what if someone from the ravine, depending where I'm at, I might be even closer, and they're lower and shoot in a direction that comes up and raises up and comes out my heart. But the ravine is on the other side of the body, man. The, sh the shot that came in through the victim is on the right side. You're talking about the ravine to the left side. Then the medical examiner <coughs> said, yes, you could take steps. Yes, you could even go feet. Yes, you might be able to go yards. How do you know that he didn't try to go get help after being shot and took some steps and fell in the direction of the house. How do you know that? Because there's no signs of struggle or signs or blood drippings or anything that suggests that he walked. Well, sir, do you remember his testimony when he rolled up on this and saw the body and told the uh, call center there was no sign of blood? That the medical examiner said most of the blood was contained in the body. Yes, I understand. I remember that. And when you have an exit location and you roll someone over, you're going to allow the blood to move in a direction that will allow maybe possible leakage at that time. And hence, we see that in the shirt, correct? That's correct. So you're moving the body may have caused all the bleeding for people to see. And I say you, meaning your department. I understand that, man. Okay. The problem is, sir that the burden of proof, first at probable cause and now in the court, beyond a reasonable doubt, lies with you guys. And I want to go ahead and examine what evidence do you really have, sir, because we've heard a lot of testimony for three weeks. Would you agree? That's correct, ma'am. And I'd like to go over some of that testimony and come back to this. But you don't consider this a confession interview, do you? The interview I conducted with Mr. Kelly? Yes. A complete confession? Yes. Uh, no, ma'am. The, the thing is, he was very unreliable from the beginning. Coming into this interview, I had enough information what had occurred. Mr. Kelly walked into that interview thinking that I didn't know what had occurred. Well, I we'll gave get, him. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, ma'am. No, you're, you can finish your sentence. That's my I bad. gave him multiple opportunities to come forward and tell me. It took Mr. Kelly 30 minutes. 30 minutes before he confessed to me, well, admitted to shooting. And like you're saying, he said he shooted 
over their heads, not at them, like I explained to you earlier, man. Okay, let's look at your questions. You are the trained interviewer, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This man admitted, I just saw a dead body and basically was still in the shock of that. And you brushed it off when he tried to tell you that. And he said, maybe if you talk to me tomorrow, I'll be calmer. You heard that, right? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Kelly is a, you know, a man's man. He, he, he comes into an interview with you knowing darn well what he's there for, why you arrested him out at the scene, okay, and brought him in in handcuffs, right? You don't think he doesn't know? People know that, right? If you're handcuffed, you're probably under arrest, correct? Oh, he's an educated man. I believe he would know, man. Okay, and we learned about his education. Thank you. That's correct. Now... You know there was, you did nothing wrong. Go with me for a second. And then in the same location that your departments and the Border Patrol, everyone searched out there and no one found a body. We don't even know if that body walked later or earlier, was there. We just don't know. We don't have that evidence, true? That's correct. Okay. Now, he's cutting up a little bit of humor. Just like he did with it, with his um, text messaging. So let's talk about the text messaging and come back to this. You you had a chance to look through all those text messages, right? If you're talking about the ones with uh, Detective Barba did on the search warrant. Yes, and it was with uh, Jeremy Marcel, and then it moved into friend and family, correct? I briefly looked at him, yes. Okay. And you heard the testimony here, and they conveyed it to everyone, correct? That's correct. Ma'am. Okay. If you knew that you were a senior citizen with your wife, no one else out there on a big ranch, and people on a regular basis are coming through his property, and Border Patrol is taking the time to warn them about it, and it led, Jeremy was warning him through January as it led up to this case, correct? That's correct. According okay. Text messages, yes. And this is not a, a, this is a type of guy that thinks he could handle everything himself. And he can't be, he probably wouldn't admit it, but I bet you he had to be very worried and very scared on his own property. Is that possible? On the day of the incident? Uh, up leading up to it, the last half year, where however far back you need to go. It's his choice to live out there, man. When you own that much land, and they usually come out there in the winter and go to another location, like a snowbird, right? Did he yes. mention that to you? Yes. Okay. But he owns it. This is his home, and he can't even be on his own home and he's being told it's scary out there and he hears about it and he learns about a dead body right down the road from him a lady you put it together how he should feel shouldn't he be scared that tells somebody wearing that body ma'am that dead body that was not a murder I, or we don't know what he heard but i'm saying is the rumors went out that a lady died right down the road and neighbors have conveyed different messages than possibly what you eventually investigated. The point is, the fear factor and him being a man's man cuts up jokes instead of saying, best friend, I'm scared. Son, I'm scared. I'm worried about your mom. Objection, Your Honor. Testimonial. Is there a question? Sustained. These are his behavior on the text messages could have resulted from his reaction to fear, just like he did when he started off the interview with you. It's possible, right? That's exactly what I asked him, ma'am. I asked him if he thought he shot out of fear to tell me. No, no, no. The fear wasn't that he shot out of fear. The fear was he's in a police station being interrogated by a detective accusing him of doing it. People do get scared when they get around the police. Would you agree? Not everyone. 
A lot of people do, sir. Not everyone. I bet you note in your report that the behaviors of people I acting. Bet you're not your honor. Well, I haven't heard the question yet. That you have made numerous reports of people acting scared or acting nervous around you. Overruled. Is that common? Overruled. It is common. Okay. And you don't know this man for Adam, right? I mean, you never met him before this incident, correct? It's the first time I met Mr. Kelly. So you don't know his character, do you? Exactly, ma'am. Okay. So you draw on your own conclusions without knowing the rest of the story. It's possible, right? What do you mean by that? Well, let's start back at the beginning when we have a mishap of communication from Jeremy to his supervisor, to the call center, to dispatching out information saying that he admitted to shooting. Do you all have your book informed or you can you tell me the numbers? I can read it from the clerk too. Number two. Can I get number two, please? take a few minutes, whatever, after you interviewed Mr. Kelly, correct? That's correct, ma'am. Now, he denied this, and I'm going to blow it up just a drop, too, for anyone that needs the eyesight help. Mr. Kelly was interviewed and admitted to What's that word there, sir? Shooting? I want to make sure I get this quote right. Last line. Is this shooting? Yes. Yes, shooting. Did you read the rest of the sentence? At male subjects. A deceased male subject was discovered on, this, on his property. The male subjects that he said he shot over the head were the five people he tried to report, correct? That's correct. And that was plural. That's correct. How you get from that group to the east direction of body, I'm not sure how you place that body from one group to the other. How, how do you? This is based on one Mr. Kelly of the five subjects, whether it was the two that passed or the other ones. This is what was documented. So... He's being arrested then not for a first-degree murder, but for assault, aggravated assault, for shooting over the head of five subjects on his property? At the time of the booking and the arrest, man, this is what the charge was. Which is? Uh, first-degree murder. So that's premeditated. That's correct, man. I'm sorry. Let me... What's the matter? No, I oh, okay. changed something on the screen here. It's Okay. And first degree is premeditated. Yes, ma'am. So you're saying that he went out there and thought it out that he was going to shoot someone? His actions, ma'am, knowing what he was doing, he went out there. This, this uh, unlawful discharge of the farm, disregard for human life, he went out there and shot, man. And you do believe in the self-defense ability that all Americans have a right to defend themselves, correct? I do believe that, ma'am. Okay, and person raising a rifle up at you, sir, right now I'm raising my handgun at you, and what would you do if I did? Be honest, what would you do? I, I would shoot back. Okay, so you would take your weapon out if it's not already out, if it was only a handgun, but if you had a rifle in your hands, you would raise it at me and possibly shoot right at me, wouldn't you? 
Yes, ma'am. And that is called self-defense, sir, yes, right? But Yes, ma'am. Okay. So nothing you've heard from him when he said a person turned around with his rifle and pointed it at him. Anything about that says you don't have a right to self-defense and you're calling it reckless? I'm not saying that, ma'am, completely. Mr. Mr. Kelly stated when I asked him if they were coming at them, he said no. I did ask him if they pointed the weapon at him. He did say yes, but he never said that they shot at him. Gee, sir, do you need to wait till a bullet hits you before you return fire? I'm not saying that, ma'am. Okay, so Mr. Kelly did not need to wait for another shot, but he's already heard one, correct? Based on his version of calling Jeremy, he said, I heard a shot, correct? Based on his testimony, he said he heard one shot. And he said that to you in his interview, correct? That's correct. Okay. So now he knows that something's out there willing to shoot at something, and you want him to wait till another bullet hits him? No, ma'am. Personally, I wouldn't have done what he would have done. I would have shot at the person with the rifle and not up in the air. But that was pretty gracious, wouldn't Objection. you say? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. I'm still kind of confused how shooting off to the right where these men were seen run, you know, running, crossing his window... I'm still confused how you think because he was just out there and had a gun that that meant he killed the man in the east direction. You were out there, man. You've yes. seen the pictures of how many rounds we found. Okay. There was one to the right and the rest to the left. Is it kind of going to be shooting from left to right or right to left? There's nine casings that were found out there. Now, I'm not going to bore with all those photos. We saw them all earlier, but I do have a couple on that point I'd like to show you. Yes, ma'am. And I believe these are coming from the grouping. Just a minute, Your Honor. Sure. My desk got messed up. So. I'm just going to mark them to be safe. <laughs> it's okay. They may not have.
Okay, I'm going to show you uh, two photos now noted as Defense 000. Oh, I'm sorry, I can do that. Well, um, Ms. Lothorpe, I've been, it's 3 o'clock. I'm looking for a good time to. Let me just finish this evidence. That's what I was going to ask you. If you want to do that, then let's do that. identify these photos. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, what, the, what are they? These are shell casings uh, identified with placards just outside the porch uh, leading out from Mr. Kelly's residence. Okay. And which numbers are these placards? One and two. Okay. And this accurately depicts the way y'all put these down, these numbers, in order to reflect this evidence, correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. Because I'd like to enter into evidence uh, defense 000 and NNN. It's 3 o'clock. We're going to break for the weekend. Uh, have a great weekend. Remember the admonition of the court. We'll be back here Tuesday morning at 8.30 to um, continue with the examination of the witness. We're adjourned until 8.30. Have a good weekend. We rise before.